Hi guys, this is Norm from Nerdbench. Today we are getting a first look at a cubbyboard too. Since it's our first cubbyboard, I guess we'll have a real close look to this one. We ordered the developer set from miniant.com which comes with some extras. It includes an SATA cable, an OpenAir case and a serial to USB cable adapter. Let's have a look around the cubbyboard. We have two normal sized USB ports, an SD card reader, the HDMI port, the on and off switch and a power supply. Next to that we have the power adapter for the hard disk, the infrared port and the SATA connector. Right next to the all winner A20 we find a serial port and on the other side two 512MB of RAM. And last but not least we have mini USB port for OTG, an Ethernet port and the audio output. On both sides the Cubbyboard 2 features 10 pins for external ports. On the bottom of the device we find a 4GB internal memory and a line-in for microphones. As mentioned before, the developer edition features a sandwich case with two plastic pieces. It's quickly assembled but if you're thinking about buying a Cubbyboard, don't cut your nails for a few days or ask your wife to remove the brown protective skin of the plastic. Peeling them off is definitely a job for fingernails. We here at Nerdbench gave up after a few minutes trying to peel it off. But we've come up with a solution. Heat. Just a few minutes later we peeled off everything off the case. Android 4.2 is pre-installed on the Cubbyboard 2. Since the first Cubbyboard was sold with 4GB of ROM, the second edition is 2. Cubby's homepage also has Linux images for the Cubbyboard 2. While we assemble the case, let's talk about the processor. And of course we are going to benchmark it. If you owned the first Cubbyboard, you know the first edition was released with the single core Allwinner A10. Since both processors are pin compatible, Cubby was able to refresh its old board with the new Allwinner A20. The Allwinner A20 is a dual core ARM Cortex-A7 processor with a dual Mali 400 GPU. It features 512KB L2 cache with 128KB L1 cache. It supports DDR2 and DDR3 RAM. The processor is capable of recording and playing full high definition videos. Its max display resolution is 1920 x 1080. It's possible to use HDMI 1.4 devices. The processor itself can handle 5 or 8 megapixel cameras, but there's no camera included with the Cubbyboard 2. If you are about to get a Cubbyboard, here's what you need to have to get started. The Cubbyboard 2 is delivered with a USB cable but not with the power adapter. Besides that you'll need to buy an HDMI cable and of course an HDMI screen. To navigate with the Cubbyboard you'll need a mouse or a keyboard, we are using the Mili F10. The Cubbyboard is missing a pre-installed wireless LAN, so we have to add that manually or go with the Ethernet port. Our first wireless LAN adapter didn't work. Another thing we are missing with the Cubbyboard 2 is Bluetooth, but since other boards ditch Bluetooth as well, it's not a major downside. Personal computers are getting smaller every day. Even though the Cubbyboard is a little larger than other boards like the Raspberry Pi, it has much more features, like a gigabyte of RAM instead of just 512 megabyte. Not to mention the SATA 2 port and infrared. You even can plug in a VGA port which is also available at miniad.com. The upgrade to the dual core processor suits the Cubbyboard well. We have seen a single core processor in the Hackberry A10 and we know that the all winner A10 is now outdated. Besides the processor the device is about the same as the Cubbyboard 1. So you can use all your old accessories of the previous edition. A very cool feature is the setup port for adding hard disks to the Cubbyboard. If you're thinking about getting a board as a mini PC you definitely should go with the Cubbyboard instead of the Raspberry Pi. You have many options toying around with this device. You can use the Cubbyboard as a normal Android TV stick, web server or your very own cloud. If you have any questions left, feel free to comment. For more videos from Nerdbench, follow us here on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. My name is Norm Szapanski for Nerdbench.